if a story is only as good as its hero, then the hero is only as good as the villain. For those of us who began our otaku journey with Tite Kubo's Bleach, the release of the final Thousand Year Blood War arc after a decade is both emotional and nostalgic. While we've been introduced to a new antagonist, Yuabok, let's take this time to pay tribute to the legendary Aizen Sosuke, whose villainy spanned through almost the entire series. In an intricate universe of multiple dimensions where humans, soul reapers, Quincy, and hollows thrive in a controlled environment, the maelstrom that is Aizen is thrust upon the world. To understand this complex character, Anime Unlimited brings to you Aizen Sosuke A Complete History. Before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell! Now to fully understand Aizen, it's imperative to follow the Bleach Saga. Kurosaki Ichigo, a human teen, acquires the power of a Soul Reaper, or Shinigami, with the help of another Shinigami, Kuchigi Rukia. A Soul Reaper's duty entails dispatching Hollows, or souls gone astray, to the realm known as Soul Society, which is home to all souls and their keepers. When Rukia is arrested for transferring her powers to a human and taken back to await execution, Ichigo and his friends infiltrate Soul Society on a daring rescue mission. Typical of power-up stories, a tournament arc begins, but that's when the drama begins to unravel. The kind and scholarly Aizen, captain of the 5th squad of the 13 court guards, or Gotei 13, makes an appearance for the first time. Raising questions about Rukia's rushed execution and all but pointing at 3rd squad captain Ichimaru Gin for having a hand in it, he moves Aburai Renji, lieutenant of the 6th squad, and Hitsugaya Toshiro, captain of the 10th squad, to run around chasing shadows. In the midst of the bedlam caused by Ichigo's invading group, Aizen is found dead, impaled by his own sword. That's when the plot thickens. It later emerges that Aizen faked his own death and, prior to that, massacred the Central 46, the judicial authority of Soul Society, in charge of Rukia's trial and execution. A master manipulator, Aizen also leaves letters addressed to his lieutenant Momo Hinamori that appear to be irrefutable evidence of Toshiro's hand in Rukia's planned execution and Aizen's murder. Sadistically pitting childhood friends Momo and Toshiro against each other, we see Aizen for what he really is. With no qualms about using Momo's implicit trust in him, Aizen even tries to get her killed by Toshiro. Meanwhile, Ichigo rescues Rukia after a series of tremendous tribulations, but that is just the beginning of the catastrophe that is to follow. Momo walks in on Aizen and Gin in the Central 46 chambers, where Aizen stabs her, all the while whispering words of kindness and gratitude. When the intricate ruse of Aizen's death is finally foiled by 4th Squad Captain Retsu Unohana, his evil masquerade is revealed to all, and we also understand one of his most formidable powers, his Zanpakuto Kyoka Suigetsu's chilling ability to complete hypnosis. With just a glimpse of the sword's release, Aizen's opponents are trapped in a false reality of his making. No one can escape the Zanpakuto's illusions except for a blind man, which means that the sightless Kaname Tozen, captain of the 9th squad, has been Aizen's subordinate all along together with Gin. Aizen's motive is ultimately revealed in the finale of the Soul Society arc. Atop Sokyoku Hill, as the execution ground is called, Rukia and Renji are cornered by Aizen, Gin, and Tozen. Here, it is revealed that the entire series of incidents that have taken place so far were carefully orchestrated by Aizen in order to extract the Hogyoku embedded deep inside Rukia's soul by Urahara Kisuke, the disgraced former captain of the 12th squad and founder of the Shinigami Research and Development Institute. Aizen's desire for the Hogyoku stems from an obsessive thirst for power greater than his own. By dissolving the boundary between Shinigami and Hollow, the Hogyoku makes it possible to attain the attributes of the other race and gain more power. This process is known as Hollowfication, or in the case of Hollows, Orunkarification. Aizen's ultimate goal is to use the Hogyoku's powers to become a being that surpasses both Shinigami and Hollow, thereby ascending to the ranks of a god. To further this ambition, he aims to create the Oaken to the Soul King's palace, overthrow him, and become the next ruler of Soul Society and the other worlds. To make this key, he needs 100,000 souls and a concentrated spirit zone, which is basically Ichigo's hometown of Karakura. This is the trigger for the fake Karakura town battle that comes later in the series. After successfully extracting the Hogyoku, in spite of being surrounded by a crowd of powerful captains, Aizen, Gin, and Tosin make their escape to Hueko Mundo, the Hollow World. 
As he is lifted up safe inside the protective light of the Negation, Aizen takes off his geeky glasses and sweeps back his hair, completing his transformation into a supervillain in one of the most memorable moments in anime history. After taking over Hueco Mundo, Aizen goes about creating an army of Arankar using the Hogyoku. A natural occurring Arankar is a hollow that has ripped off its mask and gained Shinigami-like powers. But one created from the Hogyoku is incomparably stronger, and the most formidable of them are the Ten Espada. One can only imagine what it takes to keep such monsters in check. But with Aizen's beyond Captain Class spiritual pressure, intimidating the powerful Espada is duck soup for him. From his new kingdom, Aizen sends recon teams to Karakura Town to keep track of Ichigo. This is how he discovers Inui or Hime's powers of rejection, or Shunshun Rika. Seemingly wary of her abilities, Aizen has a spot in number four, Okiora Cipher, kidnap her. But his actions have a much deeper meaning. Preparing for the war to come, Orihime's abduction is actually a genius move by Aizen to deplete Soul Society's forces by goading them into rescuing her and trapping them by sealing the portals to Hueco Mundo. Just goes to show you that when it comes to analyzing how Aizen's brain works, thinking in linear terms never works. The brilliant tactician and strategist is always thinking 10 steps ahead. With their military might halved, Karakura is left vulnerable. The battle between the Shinigami and Aizen forces commences. Gote 13 Captain Commander Yamamoto Genryusai Shigekuni manages to trap Aizen, Gin, and Tosin inside a cage of flames created by his Zanpakuto, Ryujin Jaka, but not for long. Having deemed Yamamoto's sword a serious threat, the four-sided Aizen brings out Wonderwise, Margella, and a Rankar he created solely to seal the Captain Commander's flames. As the battle advances, the Visor join the fight against Aizen. With the arrival of these holified individuals who were once ranking members of the Gotei 13, we are confronted by another important facet of Aizen's past. Over a hundred years ago, the eight Visored, including Aizen's then Captain Hiroko Shinji, fell prey to Aizen's holification experiments. As a fledgling lieutenant, Aizen was picked by Hiroko, mostly to keep an eye on him. But despite his deep distrust of his subordinate, Hiroko failed to notice that the person following him around for a whole month wasn't Aizen, but a nameless replacement. This deception allowed Aizen to freely experiment on countless unsuspecting Shinigami, including former captains Kensei Muguruma, Rojiro Otorobashi, and Love Aikawa, and lieutenants Hiyori Sarugaki, Lisa Yadomaru, Mashiro Kuna, and Hachigen Ushoda, the previously mentioned Visored. On the verge of being killed, they were saved by Urahara and brought to the human world to live in secrecy. Aizen remained in Soul Society unscathed, while all the blame fell on Urahara, who was exiled. Back to the battle in Karakura, Aizen realizes his subordinates are fighting a losing battle, ruthlessly cuts them down, and joins the fight. Soon after, the Visored are pulverized, unable to escape the effect of Kyoka Suigetsu's hypnosis even after a century, such as Aizen's power. In the second half of the battle, Ichigo's arrival makes no difference as Aizen reveals his ultimate form and gives us another glimpse of his intelligence. This final form is the outcome of Aizen having created his own Hogyoku and having fused it with the one he stole from Urahara. Aizen embeds a Hogyoku in himself, having come to the realization that its full powers can only be awakened by pairing it with a soul capable of emitting extremely great spiritual pressure. Someone like himself, for instance. As Urahara, Yoruichi, and Ichigo's father Shiba Ishin arrive to tackle him, Aizen morphs into a being that transcends both Shinigami and Hollow. The trio pose little threat to Aizen, who has the power to heal himself even after taking a direct hit from Ichigo's final Getsuga Tensho. Although he is eventually sealed by Urahara, Aizen's formidable intelligence and meticulous planning is undeniable. During his time as a Shinigami, his research on hollows leads him to inventing the Hogyoku and close to successful experiments on holification, as seen in the case of the Visored. Post-defection, more research brings him to the conclusion that the Hogyoku does not blur the boundary between Shinigami and hollow, as is widely believed, but is able to sense the hearts of the ones around it and materialize their deepest desires. Thus, Aizen succeeds where rival genius Urahara failed. Aizen's undoing at the end is the result of his arrogance. Once convinced of his own invincibility, he throws all caution to the wind. A master of Kido, it is unimaginable how he lets Urahara use an infinitely low-level Kido to defeat him. Another factor leading to Aizen's ruin is his lack of empathy and respect for his subordinates. Having used them all as disposable pawns, he is left alone at the end. 
Aizen, who deceived everybody for centuries, finally gets a taste of his own medicine from Gin, who unknown to all was playing a role all along. As a child in Rukongai, Gin befriends Rangiku Matsumoto, now the 10th squad lieutenant. One day, he witnesses Aizen and his subordinates harvesting spiritual energy from her. The incident prompts Gin to join the Shinigami Academy so that he can kill Aizen one day. He wins his trust by killing for him, doing his bidding, and turning his back on Soul Society, even Rangiku. After decades of patience, Gin finally gets his revenge. During the battle, he discovers Kyoka Suigetsu's one weakness, that by touching its blade, one can evade hypnosis. In a strange twist, the revelation is made by Aizen himself. Gin seizes his chance, which unfortunately ends in failure and his own death at Aizen's hands. Sealed away to serve a 20,000-year sentence, Aizen is now deep underground in the eighth and lowest level of the prison, Mukin. But that isn't the last we've heard of him. With the invasion of Soul Society by the Wandenreich, we find him back to his calm and collected self, albeit still in prison. It is there that Yuabok, the Quincy King, invites him to be a part of his special war. Acknowledged by the ancient king himself, it is safe to assume that Aizen is still capable of massive destruction. But in an inexplicable twist, the unfathomable villain rejects Yuabok's proposition. Aizen's role in the series is far from over as the revelation of Ichigo's heritage, it turns out, is also closely tied to him. All the pieces fall into place as a retrospective of the incidents surrounding Ishin's life close to 20 years ago comes to light. Investigating the mysterious disappearance of souls and Shinigami from Soul Society, Ishin, the then captain of the 10th squad, comes across a hollow in the human world. This hollow is one of Aizen's early experiments. As Ishin battles the hollow, Aizen watches from the shadows. Deeming the hollow a failure for being unable to fend off a captain's mere shikai, Aizen is about to leave when Kurosaki Masaki, a Quincy, steps in. As she tries to save Ishin, she is bitten by the hollow and infected. Intrigued by this turn of events, Aizen keeps an eye on them. When Masaki begins to holofy, Ishin uses his Shinigami powers in exchange for her life. Forsaking his life in Soul Society, he decides to live in the human world with Masaki, now his wife. The couple have a son, Ichigo. With this background, it is now clear why Aizen has taken such an interest in Ichigo from the very beginning. A combination of Shinigami, Quincy, and Hollow, Ichigo surpasses all reason, making him Aizen's perfect experiment. Just in time for the showdown against Yuabok, Ichigo's inner Quincy and Hollow align, which is sure to make him even more powerful. This new turn makes one wonder how far Aizen has planned out every detail. Truly one of the all-time greatest arch enemies to have existed, Aizen transcends all logic and any conjectures made by our simple minds. What's more, in his exchange with Yuabok, he seems fearless and undaunted as he flat out refuses to join the father of the Quincy in his war against the Shinigami. Perhaps it is his pride as a Shinigami or his philosophy that doesn't agree with Yuabok's plan to assimilate all three worlds, human, soul society, and Hueco Mundo into one. Perhaps Yuabok's nihilistic outlook is offensive to Aizen, who with his boundless propensity for power is a living example of the thirst for life. This is evident in the moments before his defeat when he asks Urahara why someone of his intelligence would let the seemingly lifeless Soul King rule. A man of progress above all else, it is understandable that Aizen would want nothing to do with such a lifeless world. And now for the icing on the cake of his accomplishments. Even bound to his prison cell and with all his powers sealed, Aizen manages to distort Yuobok's sense of time with his complete hypnosis, which one can safely conjecture is somehow in effect. This makes the Quincy King miscalculate the time he spends fighting Yamamoto Genryusai and forces him to hurriedly exit Soul Society. In an arc where Yuobok is the chief antagonist, it is Aizen who gets the final laugh at this moment. And with that, we've come to the end of our video. From Aizen's betrayal of Soul Society to his reign over Hueco Mundo, from the raging inferno of war he creates to the black depths of despair he eventually finds himself in, Aizen shines like no other villain. Manipulative, cruel, power-hungry, yet at the same time proud, creative, and brilliant, Aizen is a character of many layers. It's no wonder he has remained a fan favorite for all these years. Leave us your thoughts and suggestions below, and do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Also, don't forget to click on notifications for our new videos. With the impending blood war, it will most likely be a fresh change to see Aizen fighting on the side of justice. But can we be sure he doesn't have an agenda of his own?